I happen to have a pretty cool yard, and with that comes lots of birds. And I like to feed them, but when you feed birds, not surprisingly, you get squirrels. Squirrels deserve tremendous credit for their problem-solving abilities, acrobatics, and general tenacity. If a feeder has a vulnerability, these guys will find it. Last year I tried to make a bird feeder that would be resistant to squirrels. It gave them a small electric shock if they tried to get in, as you'll see here. Oh! Huh, it works. Wow. I'm gonna try closing the circuit here and see what happens. Whoa, oh dear God. That's pretty drastic. Now it's prudent to point out that the shock that you just witnessed was not actually used on squirrels. For that demo, I had a microwave transformer hooked up to create the arc. What I actually used was an electric fence energizer that's geared towards small animals. It gives them a shock, enough for them to reconsider their choices, but it doesn't do any lasting damage. That original design had a few major faults that sent me back to the drawing board. Most importantly, squirrels figured out how to get into it. The electric fence energizer delivers a momentary pulse every second or so, and you saw how short the electrodes were on that upright. So if the squirrels ran really fast up the pole, they could get past the electrodes without getting shocked. The other design fault was that it was kind of flimsy. The big hopper feeder that you see right now was too heavy for it. Also, I didn't like the way that the thing attached to the deck. It made it difficult to clean and refinish the deck, so the new design attaches from the bottom, so that's no longer an issue. Here is the latest iteration of my bird feeding setup. Um, you know, it's set up to accommodate four bird feeders. You can pretty much tell what's going on from looking at it. It's not too complicated. What makes this thing a little bit unique, though, is how it's set up to uh, defend the feeders from squirrels. Uh, if we get in a little bit closer here, you can see that there are two wires spanning the length of this thing. Uh, not sure how well you can see that on the camera, but they go all the way from the top here, or almost all the way to the top, down to the bottom. And these things are electrified by an electric fence energizer, so that if a squirrel tries to climb up this upright, they get a little bit of a shock. I'll show you here with the knife, maybe you can see or hear a bit of an arc there. There. It's a few of them. I'm not sure if you could perceive it, but they're there. It's sparking, and so far I haven't seen a single squirrel go up in this thing. I've seen a lot of squirrels take interest in it. They'll sit around here and kind of look at it and ponder going up, or they'll sit here and think about it as a launch pad to get up to any of these other feeders. But so far, I haven't seen any actually try to climb it. And for a squirrel to not try to climb something, well, it's kind of indicative that maybe it's tried and it's learned a bit of a lesson. This is present, Kurt, coming in with a bit of an update. Right now, it's January 23rd. This original footage is from the fall, but it's been here for a few months now, and I've seen two squirrels try to get into it. They take a few steps up at most, and then the fence energizer sends its pulse of electricity and they jump right down. Uh, there's no evidence that any squirrel has never actually made it into the feeder, so uh, I think it's safe to call this thing a winner. Anyway, as far as powering this thing goes, I mentioned it was powered by an electric fence energizer that's um, located over here. You can see a little red light on it that flashes periodically. That's just indi indicating that it's sending a pulse of electricity through these wires down under the deck and onto that guy. Let's head around down below and you can take a look at the rest of this setup so you can get a better idea of how it's constructed. One design criteria element that I wanted is to have something that I wouldn't have to move in order to power wash or refinish the deck. This kind of accomplishes that because it doesn't interact with the surface or the railing. It's all just kind of uh, self-contained here. Here you can see the process of uh, refilling these feeders. I've got my bin of seed here and this hook that I've constructed that I can use to get the feeders down from the upright. Just set the camera aside and go.
another piece of design criteria that this upright needs is strength. So you can see I'm putting a lot of seed into these feeders. That big one in particular is very heavy. Um, it doesn't have any trouble holding these things up now. It can hold up to lots of birds on them, and also it's been through some pretty heavy wind, and it's not really shown any signs of weakness. So, pleased with it in that regard as well. As far as recreatability goes, my design, due to my choice of material, requires a welder and ideally a tubing notcher. The fundamental principles that make this design a success could be recreated with other materials as well. There's no single right design or no single correct material, so come up with something that works for you and the material you prefer to work with, and happy building and happy birding. I actually teach myself how to weld aluminum for this project, so if you need to expand your skill set, go for it. It's kind of a fun to do sometimes. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more like it, please consider liking and subscribing. It costs you nothing, but lets me know that the content was well received. Thanks and have a good one.